In this section, we'll learn about the basic data types. Data can be numbers, words, true-false values, or combinations of these. In order to understand some later concepts, it's useful to have a basic understanding of these data types. All right, we'll start with numeric mm -hmm. data. Yeah. So there are a few different numeric types of data, and we call these doubles and integers, and there's also a, a type called complex that we won't really talk about. So if you use the, the integers, say 1 through 10, you can say 1 colon 10 is a shortcut to give us the integers 1 through 10. These are integer types. If you want to know what type a variable is, you could use type of, and that tells you this is an integer. Now, somewhat confusingly, if you do this, type of 10, oops, that tells you this is a double. Now, doubles are numbers that do or can have decimal places. Um, now, if you just type the number 10, it will assume this is a double type. And if you want to say that it's an integer, it can't possibly have any decimal places, you can put the letter capital L after it. And that tells R that you mean this to be an integer. This is a kind of number that can't possibly ever have um, fractional parts, like a count, maybe. Um, when you use the shortcut 1 colon 10, that means everything should be an integer, and those come out as um, integer types. Now, R treats these two very similarly. Um, there are very few cases where you'll be able to tell any difference between using 10 or 10L where you mean the integer 10. So don't worry too much about using L, but just so that if you ever see it in someone else's code, you know that means this number is being an integer. Um, if you want to know if, if some variable is a number, so let's say we'll make n equal to 10.3 and m will equal um, the word 10. Now, this type is a double, or it's numeric, and that type's not numeric. So you can use the function is.numeric. See, yes, n is a numeric type of variable. m, m is not. Now, you're probably starting to wonder, why on earth do we ever need to know this? Um, remember, we created that data table avatar with the names, the bending types, and whether or not characters were friendly. When we look at this data frame, we can see these little um, words inside of brackets here, in angled brackets, CHR, CHR, and LGL. And that stands for character and logical types. You can also use the glimpse function to look at avatar and that will give you some information about your table. So it tells you the name, the character type, or the, the column type, so character, character, or logical, that is true or false values. Um, and will tell you if they're numeric, double integer types as well. Okay. So character is the next data type that we have. And we've already seen a character type. So M, remember, was the word 10. If we want to check and see is a variable um, or a value a character type, we can use is.character and see that, yes, m is a character, n is not. You might also hear characters called strings. Um, characters or strings are just values that are between quotation marks. Even if those values are numbers, if they're between quotation marks, they're treated like words. If you want to create a, a character string that has quotes inside of it, that can be a little bit tricky, but we can make a quote that is a quote. So you start your double quotes and then you use a backslash to what we call escape the your next double quotes. This is quoted and then we have our ending double quotes and then the real end of the string. So this first quote and this last quote um, 
tell R that everything inside of here is a string. And the backslash says, this isn't really the end quote. This is, um, we want the character, a quotation character in here. So when we type that here, we can see this is quoted, or if we, and this will show you the, um, the outside quotation marks and the, the slashes, but if we use the cat function, that prints out um, your string directly to the console, and you can see this is quoted with the quotation marks. The next data type that we're going to look at is logical. We've talked about logical data already inside the avatar um, data frame. So logical data are true or false values. They're also sometimes called Boolean values. Um, in R, we always write them in uppercase, T-R-U-E or F-A-L-S-E. You'll see that R kind of treats this like a function until we hit the last letter and then it turns blue to tell you that this is a special type of, of variable here. So we can set our object called is true to true is false to false here you can also use and you can see these values up here you can also use the shortcuts capital F and capital T so you can run that and see those values are still true and false um, I recommend not using this because of a few quirks where you can mess it up and that the letters T and F often mean other things in statistics that you don't want to overwrite. So just use T-R-U-E and F-A-L-S-E as your true and false values. Now you can also often see people using zeros and ones for true and false values. So if you check to see is true equal to the number one, you'll find yes it is. Um, and that false is equal to the number zero. Um, now, this is because when you check to see if two different data types are equal to each other, but they're not the same, diff the same kind of data type, R will change them into the more compatible data type. So numbers get changed to their Boolean value um, equivalents, but if you're trying to compare, say, a character string and a number, the number will get changed to its string value. So if you want to see does 10 equal the string 10, you'll see that's true. But this can give you a really weird result. And you could find that check see is 100 greater than 9? That's false because it's changed the number 100 into the word 100 and then is alphabetically comparing these. And alphabetically, 100 comes before 9. So you need to be a little bit careful about data types. This is why we're teaching you about data types, so that you can avoid potential problems like this.